The campus is an organization that plays an important part in shaping and forming campus life, and it affects every student attending USU, regardless of class rank or college enrolled. Even though this group exhibits a great amount of influence over the course of the year regarding student activities, the existence or even the purpose for their existence is not known to many students. Therefore, this week we are presenting the Executive Council in an effort to increase the students' understanding and awareness of this group, and hopefully increase the amount of interaction with students and the representatives. The Executive Council consists of the student body president, the executive secretary, seven vice presidents over cultural, administrative, business, public relations, organizations, academic, and athletic affairs. The basic purpose for the existence of this council is to decide the allocation of student funds to help provide the many varied activities that will involve as many students as possible, to decide matters dealing with the constitution of the associated students of Utah State University, to defend student rights, to serve as liaison between the students and the administration, to urge academic change when necessary, and to deal with bills and resolutions brought before the council. The Executive Council hold weekly meetings every Wednesday afternoon at 5 o'clock in the Senate Chambers on the third floor of the University Center, and these meetings are always open to the public. Chairing the Executive Council is the student body president, Rick White. Probably one of the major responsibilities of a student body president, as I have been experiencing it thus far in office, is that uh, my responsibility to be an advocate for the students or a, a representative for the students and the many different uh, committees that uh, are on campus. I know weekly I attend a, a good number of meetings where it's basically my responsibility to represent the student point of view and student interests to the administration and to the faculty to be a more effective representative of those students. It's also his responsibility to find out what those students' needs are and then uh, by coordinating his own work and the work of the student body officers, which he works with. Stuart is administrative vice president. The office of uh, administrative vice president uh, entails two chief responsibilities. As administrative vice president and the chairman of two committees. Uh, the first is the University Center Policy Board, which uh, is made up of members of faculty and administration and students who make the policy for the entire University Center. Uh, the second committee of which I'm chairman is the Student Activity Board, which does all the programming for the building. That includes the dances, the, uh, the movies, the lectures and forums that may take place, uh, the nightclub and uh, the galleries, all the type of things that go on in the building. Ellis is the business vice president. Well, the duties of the finance vice president that are outlined in the Constitution are really quite limited. Uh, they include, of course, budget control. Uh, that would be accounting for all the money, all the monies that are spent by ASUSU, which amount to about $250,000 a year. Now, of course, out of this, about uh, 150000 will come out of the student fees, the activity fee. We get $6 a quarter from every student. And then another 100, 110000 come in on revenues, on things like concerts. And, and all of that goes through this office, not the money, but the, the accounting for it, and the controlling, and the paper figures. And of course, I get a print out of all this, and, uh, uh, and accountable for it, so to speak. And Handling athletic affairs. Handling athletic affairs is Mark Bingham. Under my jurisdiction, uh, really, all the games uh, that the students are involved in, the charities, the soldiers, the booster club, and everything uh, along this line fall. The present day, uh, along with working with the charities and soldiers at the games, we're trying uh, with all the diligence to develop a mascot that would be, be acceptable to the students and at the same time uh, represent um, Utah State for what it is, an Aggie. Um, we are right now making new uniforms for the soldiers and the cheerleaders, one of which uh, you've just seen or will see. 
And then it go through the office. Uh, athletics, of course, receives five dollars per quarter per student for their uh, program. Associated students get for the student body officers, in essence, get five dollars per quarter per student, which they organizations on the USU campus. Actually, the title of organizations VP is somewhat ambiguous because this job involves more than just representing the various organizations on campus. Of course, this is one of the prime concerns that I have, and that is that the different organizations here on campus that feel they need to be represented can come to this office, and I can do what I do what I can to help them and represent them the best I can. But, like I said, the job involves more than that, and one of the big aspects of this position is the volunteer service program. And this is something that I'm working on this year, and, and I see this year as being kind of the foundation or the base to build on for uh, future years. The volunteer service program includes a mobile project last year, which was a, a cleanup project in Ecology Drive. Uh, right now, also, we're playing one for spring again. Miles Jensen. Miles, Miles Jensen is the academic vice president. The office of academic vice president at Utah State is uh, not particularly defined in the Constitution very well. It just says principal coordinator of activities, and also a head of the academic council, which is composed of senators from each college of the university. As coordinator of committees on the university, this year uh, we're expanding this role, we hope, quite a bit from the past. We're going to try and see uh, that students are attending committees and being active in committee decisions. Um, and we're also trying to get better and more students appointed on committees throughout the university. Uh, any students who uh, want to be appointed to most committees in the university can work through this office to gain appointments. George Danes is cultural vice president at Utah State. The cultural vice president has four main responsibilities. He's in charge of the popular concerts at the university. He's in charge of the lecture program, the fine arts concert, and the fine arts film festival. Now, the main responsibility that concerns students is the popular concert. So we're making an effort to bring in concerts that are more appealing to the broad background of students. Uh, there's a committee that does the advertising for these, and there's also a committee that does the selection. I know after the first of the year, we'll be having several really excellent concerts. We'll be having the Carpenters and the Nina Goody Dirt Band. We're also working on funding up a contract with the Fifth Dimension into May. But I hope that the students enjoy these concerts, and then if they don't, we get some input back so we can change to what they do want. Doug Dean is the Public Relations Vice President of the Associated Students. When I first took office, the main duties were to handle the new student orientation in the fall, to correspond with other universities and high schools, to take care of high school leadership workshops, which we have now done away with, and to represent the student body of USU to the outside world. We've added some new things to the office. Right now I officiate over the phone, which is the codophone in the activity center, which records any message that someone might wish to convey to the executive council. And also I'm in charge of the polling group, which now will kind of help the executive council to know the wants and desires of the students. Also the ombudsman committee, brand new on campus, to help act as a student lawyer and to stand up for student rights at USU. And also to officiate over the ombudsman committee, which has just been set up. What? Oh! My! Oh! Mrs. Johnson, I thought you were your daughter, Dale. This year's Aggie basketball team was able to produce only a fair season, having to play catch-up ball at about the to end at about the 500 level. Many possible reasons could be cited for this, a new coach, the loss of Nate Williams to the pros, or perhaps even player differences on and off the court. However, the Aggies can take some consolation for their efforts, as the highlight of the season was the first victory ever over the Weber State Wombats in Ogden. Even though the Aggie team wasn't able to catch fire and missed a postseason 
playoff bid by a slight margin. The Yankees did draw over 100,000 fans for the second season in a row, that being quite a feat in itself. The Spectrum provided more than an adequate facilities for, the, for Coach T.L. Plains' team to display their talents. However, one area of the arena always in view of the fans, but a place from which few have been able to view the Yankees is the press box. Located on the north side of the spectrum, perched above the grand general admission seats, the press box hosts a variety of activities that all have an effect upon the game and the viewers. At the far right, as viewed from the student side, are two booths in which the statistics are recorded and tab tabulated at halftime and at the end of the game. A press sheet is typed, printed, and handed out telling who has scored, how many points are scored by each player, the exact time of the basket, and the type of shot. The main area of the box, the one most noticeable, houses the reporters of various news medias. Starting from the right to left are reporters for the Salt Lake Tribune, Deseret News, Logan Herald, Associated Press, and Utah State's own student life. After these are a team statist statistician and the team cameraman, Ted Hansen of Photo Services on the campus, who take the game films and record the statistics for study later. Also available are facilities for network and local TV hookups where the TV cameras come in and plug right into the press booths and everybody's moved over to another room. In charge of all this is Mr. Ken Mitchell of Sports Information Services. And it's to him that we owe our thanks for the information he has given us. One, two, three, four. Testing, testing, one, two, one. One.